little shop tour. See what I see. So this operation floor, all this organization, what you're soon to see in the back there, which is where my shop is. This was over a year in the making, surface resurfacing the floor and painting it and new plumbing and new hot water tank. I pulled out the old oil tank, the old um, oil furnace. I did all that last year myself. A lot of work, an extreme amount of work. I'm exhausted, but I'm officially done. I'm done. Everything I wanted to do is done. Every nut and bolt, every single thing in here, everything in here is organized. Not a nut or bolt out of place. Don't look at that paraphernalia. Um, this is, I've got silica packs in there filled up same with this so this is all acoustic guitar strings that's all electric guitar strings for guitar repair this is various stuff very not interesting what kinds of tools here's a lumber rack that's uh, some mahogany down there i've got uh, some maple some cedar some pine then over here we've got it's slim pickings right now but uh because i've been so busy and i was sick and uh, you know health issues all that stuff there's not many in here but that's my workload for guitar repairs re well instrument repair i should say booze hound um this is a lumber rack uh this here Oh my God, I, I never used this. This actually had my router on it for eight years. This has just recently become a, an accessory in my shop, which is going to come in handy now. Anyways, back to this. This has got a bunch of um, dowels, various small pieces on the top there. These are bulk Martin guitar strings that I use to restring acoustics with. That's a, I use that as a jig for my uh, uh, neck resets. So there's just a bunch of various woods in there. Uh, some sheet goods, not very much because I deal with normally hardwoods, soft or um, solid woods. I mean, normally hardwoods. Some uh, cherry. I've got some cherry. Oh, there's some cherry over there too. Yeah, uh, walnut cherry. There's some maple in here. Same with in here. Some cherry. Some maple. Here, my stool. I just recently, imagine, for years I sat on that Iron Maiden without a cushion, and now with my sciatic nerve situation, it's a necessity. And this thing's killer, doesn't move. It's a cushy on my tushy. Various hoses for vacuums and dust collection, scraps and cutoffs, dust collection fans. This is a cool cabinet that I pulled out of the garbage many, many years ago. It's got some specialty glues in there, some high-end uh, uh, CA glues, some epoxies, just uh, various types of adhesives. These are a must. I use these all the time. Give me bionic eyes. Steve Hill. This is a, one of my tool racks. Bunch of files, corner files. This is a wonderful file. I've turned all these handles, by the way. Um, I turned my drill press many years ago into a lathe for a few days, and I turned a bunch of handles, and including some screwdrivers I'll show you in a second. This here is a specialty file I made. It's a really good Nicholson, US made. Um, they don't do that anymore. Safe edges I ground that are highly polished, so when I rub up against the surface, it doesn't do any damage. I just file where I want to. So cutters, uh, these are highly specialized, expensive tools from Stuart McDonald for removing stripped fender nuts. Uh, oh my God, this, this here, this is called a Magifile. This cuts steel and metal like a mother. Unbelievable, man. Freaking wicked. Another specialty 
you don't find these in hardware stores. Shantoko uh, Rasp. It's got a coarse and medium on this. This thing will rip through and for carving or shaping. It's, it's you know, pretty much industry standard. Ayrton Senna. Ken House gave me that many, 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 many years ago. So this is a hammer, specialty hammers, the brass hammer for smashing frets. A reamer, uh, that's the file cleaner. Various hammers, I use that a lot in woodworking. Um, Richard Moore, God bless you, bro, miss you. Richie gave me that uh, rack of peppers, oh my God, 25 years ago. Uh, scrapers and more hammers straight edge this cabinet it's wonderful i used to have my amp here now it's tucked up here because it's not there for sound it's just the test so i got it out of the way all of this stuff has happened over years and years and years so i'll come back to the cabinet in a second these drawers i got from my buddy jerry they've come in very handy I was going to build a cabinet, but it just, you know, there's, I have way too many things going on. Anyway, so uh, this is filled with some woodworking tools, uh, not tools, but uh, wood, I should say, not woodworking, but uh, various woods, some ebony's and paduke and uh, just uh, walnut, small pieces, exotic woods, uh, leveling beam for frets. I've got some brass in here, a silicone mat, which is great for glue ups. The glue comes right off. Um, my old neck rest. This is a small uh, front leveling file I use for certain applications. Power adapters, some stuff here, some markers. Uh, these are the screwdrivers I was mentioning before with the turned handles. Pretty cool. Pencils and stuff like that. And then we come down here, I've got a computer that I use for just the internet, basically. This here has all been organized. Uh, the wheel's not there, there we go here. So this is all now, this used to be all over the place. It was such a mess, this drawer. Now everything's got its spot, little slots for my, I use this a lot, man. This is a setup. A gauge for pickups and string height and a bunch of other things. Um, specialty tools for fretting. These only are used on guitar repair. I don't use them for anything else. I've got tools for household stuff. Very highly specialized files. A Japanese marking knife. Super high carbon steel. Another marking gauge. Um, this is for tuning. And this is a wicked little multi-screwdriver. I love it. Calipers. Oh my god, I have so much stuff. And this is why it's taken me so long to get everything organized. My compressor. I always have this going here for my blowout guitars and dust and stuff like that. My wood clamps, I love these. Right now they just... I use this, I use them both, but they're mainly being used uh, to hold things right now. Nut files, saddle files, really old. Uh, I use this all the time, antique square. My Craig uh, drill guide. Angle finder, that's uh, to hold my diamond stones, should I need to, say, sharpen a shovel or something like that. Very specialized screwdrivers. Um, for my, mainly for Fender and then, you know, Phillips, uh, yeah, Phillips, small, large, and all woodworking. Uh, this is to measure angles for my plain irons and chisels, horsehair soft brush, combination squares, my little fannies often when I'm soldering, bunch of picks, power, access to power. Um, up here we've got my chisel cabinet, 
uh, yeah, chisel cabinet. These are carpenter stuff. My uh, strobe tuner, fret polish, uh, um, conditioner, fret con uh, well, blah, 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 blah. fret board conditioner. There we go. My beautiful, I love these. These are my high end woodworking chisels. In here, I have all my diamond. Whoa, hey, relax. These are all my diamond plates uh, for sharpening. All my woodworking tools and knives, my kitchen knives, etc. Very, very, very nice jig honing guide for holding my irons in place, my plain irons, and my chisels while I sharpen them over my diamond plates. Magnetized, all little screws for, you know, cavity screws and stuff like that. Um, lighter for, sometimes I'll use it for shrink, shrink tube shrink. Uh, lubes for nut saddles, all my little Allen keys. These are all specialized stuff for, mainly for guitar. Some woodworking stuff, of course. Uh, pencils, highly specialized pencils and Feeler gauges, uh, bits I use all the time. This little vise is magical for all kinds of things. It's got, you can hold round things on this side. It's got the little V in there so you can hold round things. It's I use that a lot. Saddle and nut shaping, speaking of. This I should do a demo of. This thing is freaking amazing. It's for leveling or filing when you're creating um, nuts and saddles for acoustics mainly, or electrics, but very cool. My, uh, I made this, I got this piece, uh, sorry, I took this to work and had uh, the Glowforge do that. So it's all of my, uh, this is for fret wire, so do fret jobs, stick them in there. That's for a job, a Gibson coming up. Got a guitar on the bench right now. That I got to get to. That's my soldering station. All that stuff used to be in that drawer. But anyways, there's so much. Oh my God, I've months and months and hours. And oh, this has all been, every single nut, bolt, screw has been organized, placed, divided. I mean, everything in here. I know everything is, everything that is uh, in the same category is now together as a family it's beautiful and then uh these like i've had these this used to be a cd rack of you know all this shit has been kicking around my house for decades and you know it just turns into something else and you get used to it and it stays there you know and then you start to organize and you're like hey wouldn't it be better if i did this and like why do why do i have to so many things that I couldn't access were in a box or something stupid. So all of this has been taken care of. This is polishing compound. My strops for when I sharpen. That's an old jig. Uh, sharpening jig I don't use anymore because I replaced it with that wicked one I just showed you. That's my jig for holding uh, my knives, kitchen knives, when I sharpen. All my stones. Incredible woodworker's tape, reverse meaning the, the markings are on both sides, which I absolutely adore with all the fine markings on it. It's the small things, Veritas scraper, this thing, uh, highly specialized, incredible quality. I've got a diamond and a rounds for scraping. Um, oh my God, I've amassed so many things over the years. There's my little fret polisher, so I hold that and put that over to frets when I'm polishing them. Some bearings, all my soldering stuff. Specialized tapes, some for guitar and other various projects. Bunch of felts for polishing. My charger stations, use these often. These are uh, Lee Valley um, center punches, dovetail jigs, Stanley tape for heavy duty, large measuring, uh, compass and digital angle in there, my safety glasses that are prescription, bunch of uh, various types of tweezers, and, and then in here I've got 
utility knives, razor blades, you know, marking knives, that sort of thing. Hole punches, uh, taps. That's a little ratchet, very cool. So you can get in tight spaces. This is all brand new. Before, I used to have that machine, which is a router, used to be on that, which is that, uh, I forget what you call those there. Um, oh my God, they were so popular back in the day. Anyways, that little bench was over here with that on it. This bandsaw, this little table saw, um, drill press, and belt sander slash disc sander were all on this, which was tucked in over here. So when I wanted to use one of these tools, it was a pain in my ass. So I had to move everything around, but whatever, it worked. But I, I've been in this mode of organization for months. So in upgrading my shop, so I decided to build a bench. It's nothing fancy. And that finishes quite ugly but it's it's durable and uh and i didn't want to leave it raw because it's gets dirty quickly so this would be easier to clean and i made a little little nook in here because this is i've got used to things being in a certain place so my garbage goes under there and now that it's covered i used to have a shit fall from up here fall in the fucking garbage shit rolling off my bench and i'd lose it and go hey where's that thing i haven't seen it in fucking months because it's in the mm. So, Nate, so now I'll check it out. Now it looks like a, an actual uh, thought-out situation, which it fairly is. So now I've got space for all of this. And the bonus is I get to use this for more wood storage and a tabletop for a workspace, glue-ups, etc. Just extra bench or uh, tabletop. So this thing is really simple construction, three-quarter plywood on the top uh two by four construction uh beefed up the legs so the way this is designed is really simple right and super strong so that first one goes underneath inside here and then that one houses that so it's super super stable it's bolted to the wall i've got uh shelving under here that's my cross cut cut slot holy let me say this again cross cut sled down here uh which is a very cool jig uh my bench hook that's for just for doing some rough lumber cuts um very cool uh that's my sanders my little bench top jointer comes in very handy some wood my shop vac which is connected to this which is cool when that switch goes on it turns on that vacuum and I also have dust collection, which I'll show you on top. So I try and keep dust down to a minimum. Dust collection's important. So there's my bench top drill press, bench top, <clears throat> excuse me, bench top bandsaw. The blade in the back there, that's a old hand brace, just as decoration. That's from one of my guitars, an anodized pick guard. These are specialized little spatulas. That's a highly specialized fret saw for cleaning out frets. Those scissors are Fiskars. They are mental. Oh, I love those scissors. Yeah, I said it. I love them. These are inserts for my router plates here. Now this thing is here's a here's a massive upgrade um, to my router table. I bought these recently. These are mental. They look cool too, right? But what they're designed to be, they're called stock guides. So when you run a piece of wood through here, these are at a five degree angle. So when you push the wood in, without even trying, it pushes the wood into the fence. Uh, which is incredibly uh, um, safe, right? Because... You, you want the, the wood to be up against the fence as, as much as, not as much as possible. It has to be up against the fence and very securely, right? So it just pushes everything into the fence beautifully. They're wonderful. I tested them out already and they're just incredible. So there's my uh, simple little 
router table and the hose goes underneath there so i have dust collection like from the bottom it's all encapsulated in there and then i have a hose that attaches to here so i've got two places to because it's incredibly dusty when you're using a router bunch of bits and stuff in there <clears throat> over here i've got uh, just a bunch of parts and just various uh, pickup covers and stuff like that plunge router for my dremel all kinds of screws different sizes and types and shapes and some woodworking stuff in there too a couple of jigs like a really beautiful uh a center finding uh, um, drill guide with hardened steel guides so very very useful uh, then we come over here that's a piece of marble I used for flattening uh, nuts and saddles super straight heavy down here I've got that's a um, I'll have to show you that sometime that little those two little black things are it's a jig for uh, uh, splines spline jig uh, specialty uh, blades, uh, dado blades, and a grinder, bench grinder. It's a spare drill. I don't know why it's there, but it is uh, my thickness planer. Um, this is a huge, um, uh, I, this used to be my bar in the back. It's got uh, granite um, tiles. So I use that as a flat top to send uh, things when I need super flat accuracy. There are furnace filters that I use for fans for dust collection down here. All my adhesives, solvents, cleaning products, paints, dyes, uh, butane, uh, oh my god, contact cleaners, airbrush stuff. Dowels, some drills, bits, small clamps, a uh, little torch. This is the uh, checking for electrical current. Solder sucker. This is for bridge repair and an acoustic guitar. And it goes on and on. Glue brushes. Over here, I've got a bunch of jigs. These are feather boards. These to go in slots for my table saw. Shut that door. Clamps, all kinds, long clamps, short clamps. These are woodworking jigs, uh, tenon, dado uh, jig, really cool. Thin strip jigs. Uh, built this little rack to hold my saw blades, which is <laughs> zip tied to this support post. My table saw. Oh man, this thing, I've got this thing dialed in. So this is was has been a project in itself. I bought these stock guides. Now these are really cool. These ones are heavy duty, man. Now the, the, the purpose of these is the same thing as like the router table ones, but these ones are one way. They don't go backwards. They only spin one way for safety, for kickback. So... I had no way to attach these to my fence. So what I did, oh, these are also have a five degree angle. So it pulls it into the fence as well as keeping it, of course, down on the fence. And because they only turn one way, there's uh, anti-kickback, which is extremely safe. So what I did was I bought this T-Track. This is a real T-Track, 30 mil. It's really heavy, heavy duty gauge. And then I took a piece of hard maple I had some t quarter 20 bolts left over for, um, the, from a piece of furniture I threw out years ago. I would keep everything. So I took my taps that you saw before, a quarter 20 tap, and I tapped into the aluminum fence, which able, enabled me to, to bolt this down to my fence and then had the T-track the flush with my fence. So these fit flush on here. And I put screws into the wood. And it's rock solid, man. And accurate, super safe. I'm freaking stooped. 
Now, uh, right now I have the, this is the throat plate that came with the saw, but I make my own, what they call zero clearance plates. So these are actually specific to blades I own, and they're marked. Uh, quarter inch box joint blade I have, that's for the uh, wider box joint. That's for my thinner blade. So zero clearance means the kerf is exactly the width of the blade, and this is a push stick a simple thing on the end to grab the wood to push it through the saw. Uh, the benefit of a zero clearance is tear out. You get a super, super clean with a clean, good, sharp blade. You'll get a perfect, perfect rip or a cross cut without tear out. It's wonderful. This is a super high end Incra uh, miter gauge because the ones that come with the saw is shit. But this is a I've, I've had this for years and years. But I used to just put a piece of wood across here, but I decided to do an upgrade. Um, I bought some pressure sensitive tape that's pissing me off because it's not working very well. It's a uh, Imperial, it's, it's imported. So it had, uh, sorry, it had metric markings and I'm used to Imperial. It's just, I know I'm Canadian, but I use Imperial. So I put this pressure sensitive Imperial tape on there. I've got this saw, dialed in big time i mean it is super accurate i've done some tests super excited this is a stop block so you can do repeat of repetitive cuts rather so that lock stand doesn't move now this flips back should you not need a stop and it's got a little micro adjust here these little screws right here for this here it's hard to see and I don't feel like moving it. But anyways, so this thing's dialed in perfectly. So it's super accurate whenever I use this tape. I've te uh, tested it with a tape measure and it's perfect. Super excited about that. That's amazing, amazing, amazing. And I also have, if I need, I have these clamps. They're, again, very special clamps. So I can put a piece of wood. I have it actually over there, but I'm too lazy to get it. So this goes over here. You dr basically drill a hole inside a piece of long piece of wood, and I clamp that piece of wood to my gauge. And that allows me, if I need to, to extend a piece of wood beyond my miter gauge here, fence, and get um, a backing board here so I get no tear out on the back here. It's just, I've, I mean, uh, this has been months and years in the making, man. I've got this all thought out huge light for filming or when I need uh, to see accuracy is very important when you're woodworking or working on instruments. This is a bunch of specialty tools, some fillers, stuff like that, clamps and zip ties, safety glasses, drill bits, uh, super cool router plane, hand, so handwork router plane. Uh, specialized shoulder plane that's for setting the uh, saw teeth and that saw uh, very cool old school marking gauge e d tuna that i haven't installed i've had it for like months and months and months but i'm too busy to work on my own stuff these are wicked clamps they're um, made by a german company called bessie they're very very popular in woodworking because they're the best in my opinion and they're expensive <laughs> really expensive bunch of specialized tools for guitar some woodworking tools stuck in there i got to reorganize this it's all part of the game uh, just it happens right i've just spent months almost a year down here to get this where it is all of this you see is you know it, it this happened all within a year this basement didn't look like this at all because this was a furnace here, and it was much, much different last year down here. So, yeah, so a bunch of specialty tools, uh, uh, parts, I mean, for guitar, basses, instruments, basically. My shop vac. This is attached to a cyclone. 99% of the debris goes in there, and I just empty out that five-gallon bucket. And so I've got a five gallon bucket inside a five gallon bucket. So I just ones to, you know, as a, as a base, basically. Now I just pull it out and empty it uh, when needed. 
And I've had the bag in this vacuum for 10 years, and I've never had to change it. It's the same bag. Um, so as we travel up here, magnets holding on some tap handles for tapping screws uh, or things for screws, which is what I use to make my uh, modification on my table saw fence. This is my saw rack. That's for uh, flush cutting trim around uh, when you're putting a floor in, etc. I used to use that as a saw. <laughs> Very good ear protection. Super long back saw. These are all carbon steel, old school. I sharpen these myself when needed. And uh, except for that Irwin multicolored one. That's a, looks like a cheap saw. Works freaking great, man. That little back saw. These are pretty specialized. This one is a uh, hand, uh, what do you call it? A crosscut saw by Irwin. I use that to build 90% of that bench. I did it, like I said, 90% of it was cut by hand. It's a lot of fun. Uh, just to keep your skills up, saw skills, you know, hand, hand tool stuff. It's an old marking gauge. Um, I still use it occasionally. It's super accurate. It's just, I, I like my Irwins. They're they're lightweight. Up here, I've got uh, some specialty planes. Um, these are countersink bits. Some very highly specialized one, like that one. I can go up to an inch and a half countersink. Um, these are uh, plugs for cutting plugs for filling holes, screw holes, stuff like that. 35 mil if you want to make uh, European style hinge holes. Uh, this little box filled with little uh, pieces of sandpaper, sign, sanding blocks. These are sanding blocks, various shapes and sizes. Center finder, when you want to find the center of something with a pencil. That I use to uh, uh, support braces inside an acoustic guitar. Cool little shelf, right? It looks like a little combination square with a measuring tape on it pick that up uh, at a flea market i think somewhere highly specialized saws my veritas dovetail saw uh flush cut that little one right there and the, that's a uh, when i want to deepen the slots for a brake angle on a acoustic bridge so i get a better brake angle on the saddle my japanese saw cross cut on one side and rip on the other super thin kerf. I love that saw. Little razor saw, super, super thin. Use it for making, uh, starting the slots for nuts or saddles. A gentleman's uh, back saw, which uh, could be used for, which I use for dovetails a lot. Little block planes, various ones I've accumulated. That was a gift uh, from Stuart. Um, this one was, whoa, that I, this, was rust the fuck i turned that into a piece of jewelry about 10 years ago a couple you know i've picked up at flea markets or um uh, garage sales or whatever specialty scrapers my various uh, number fours scrub plane that's a scrub plane very rough for work this is a brand new number four this is this is like trying to compete with uh, Lee Valley or Veritas or uh, Lee Nielsen or any of those high-end plane makers, except uh, it still was expensive. It was 150 bucks that plane, but it's incredible. Um, I used to use this one. Uh, with, I made this handle all by hand. It had a rosewood. They all used to come with rosewood, but this one was really badly damaged. So I made that by hand, cut it out all by hand, shaped and I used to use that one a lot because of that. It was my favorite. Now this one is a little uh, specialty brush to clean my planes. This is cool. This is a uh, micro drop, uh, oil dropper. So it literally, when you press on the button, it only puts out one little drop. It was great for micro oiling things. Uh, spoke shave, specialty planes. That's a little Stanley trim plane. I use that often, believe it or not. That's more of a novelty, but highly accurate Veritas Lee Valley 
router plane like the other one I showed you, but miniature. These are, I love this plane. This is a, my only, uh, this is not a Stanley. This is a Sergeant British plane. Really, really cool for jointing. Uh, this here, I got this from a Paul Sellers, woodworker, British guy. This is a bunch of rags rolled up uh, with uh, three in one oil, and I use it to oil my soles, my planes, because I have a lot of steel down here. And although there's very little moisture, I have, I, I, this room is controlled that way because I don't want anything rusting. But that just helps. And I use it for lubing when I'm like sawing, it helps. More clamps. Uh, measuring tools, some uh, prying tools. These are Dremel um, uh, tools, carving tools, gouging tools, um, bench uh, scraper, very cool tool. I don't feel like getting it out. Some boxes, Forstner bits in those little box there. All my, uh, I have a big router bit set in there. These are wet stones that I don't use anymore because uh, I use my diamond plates. But I should pull those out because I should finish with those. They're the ultimate, like that's when you get, the strop helps, but if I go from diamonds to whetstones to the strop, I should do that as I'm talking about that. I think I'm going to do that next time I sharpen. Um, so I think we're done, right? I think this completes the tour of my little shop. So it's not much, but it's mine, and it's taken me a year. Oh, it's taken me a lot longer than a year. Uh, but from the oil tank and the um, hot water tank, the furnace, and it's been, uh, the floor resurfacing. Anyways, blah, blah, shut up. Thank you for watching. Thanks so much. And uh, stay tuned for perhaps in another year. Another shop tour, but upgrade, maybe?